Good sunny afternoon. Heading back into the woods or the bush, as my Canadian friends might say, uh, to grab some blowdowns. Primarily, there might be some other trees that we'll take. Uh, I'm looking particularly for softwoods. Uh, I have a, a friend that wants about a thousand board feet, so I probably have enough between blowdowns and other trees that should come down or be taken out for various other reasons uh, to meet that thousand feet without a lot of problems. So this is my setup this year. In fact, it's new for me this year. Normally, when I log in the winter time, I take my loader off. I put some weights on the front on that plate. You can't have the weights and the loader on at the same time, the interfere, but without the loader, I put the weights on the front. And I made these chainsaw scabbards, which would fit in these uh, holes where the pins go um, on the cast the cast piece right there. So that's where I would mount my chainsaws and that worked really well. But this is the first time I've left my loader on and primarily the reason I took it off was for maneuverability. You can see that it adds probably four or five feet because the, the weights would come out a little bit but they're not nearly as wide. So to make turns in the wood, turn around, you know, get myself oriented for the, the winch, it was a lot easier without that extra uh, distance in the front to watch out for and I've hit plenty of trees with the buckets But I've got most of my roads in that I need uh, I've done the best that I could to make them as straight as possible and the turns as wide as possible So for now, I just keep my stuff here in the bucket As far as chainsaws, oil and gas, I have other accessories, files Things of that nature in that wooden box that I built behind the seat if it's just behind the seat and um, and barely clears there when the, the winch is, is up. If I do maintain this setup, then what I'll probably do, I know they make scabbards, either I'd purchase some that mount on the, on the loader itself uh, or make some. So I don't, uh, so I could probably at least uh, get rid of the bucket if I didn't want the uh, extra two feet or so. Uh, or just leave the bucket on. I'm not sure what I'll do. So this is a bit of an experiment. So this is exhibit number one. Looks like the butt is a bit rotten, although not too bad. A little bit rotten, but not the entire thing. Looks like it's alive at the top, but I can't say for sure because there's other treetops up there that could be commingled. Got my tractor backed around. I will likely need to pull it out of there. But the first thing to do is Cut the butt off.
They don't always work that easy. I almost got the chainsaw pinched. I should have had my uh, wedge belt on, which I'll get in a minute. But the reason I cut it at such an angle is basically vertical. So that it does exactly what it did this time. It doesn't always work out that way. Meaning the tree will just drop to the ground. If I tried to cut it perpendicular to the stem, then the weight would just sit back on the saw once it was cut and pinch the saw and just stay there. And I've done that before. <laughs> Learn from experience. So I'll wrap a chain around it, drag it out, fall it to the ground, and we'll see what it looks like. One thing I have going against me is this stump in the way. I cut it at a bit of an angle, try to get the leading edge closer to the ground. But it still may hang up on it. What I will do is, when I attach the choker, I'll attach it to one side so that it causes the tree to rotate as it comes out and that might prevent it from getting stuck on the stump. Doesn't always work that way. But we'll see, it should rotate this way as it comes out and then maybe bypass that stump. I'll tell you after it's done if it works or not. And the conclusion is, this particular setup didn't work this time. I'll reconnect it so it uh, rotates it the opposite way. Maybe we'll have that work. So I have my tool belt on, includes the wedges, hatchet, and my spencer tape to measure the logs to length. I do have chainsaw pants underneath these uh, coveralls, in case you're wondering if I care much about the safety of my legs. I do. These logs I will cut to 16, 6, 16 and a half feet, or 10 and a half feet. Those are the two lengths uh, my customer wants. Uh, it is rotten at the end. I'll keep cutting it up until I find sound wood. It is live at the top, so it was a live tree uh, limit. Drag it out log length, and I'll cut it uh, in the field to the final length.
So there's a little bit of discoloration there, but not nearly as bad as this, not nearly as punky. The axe really plunges in there like a wet sponge. But where I dug the axe in over there, it's not too bad. So I'll call that good. Wasted about six feet, but it's better than the whole tree. Let's drag it out. So when it gets uh, in the snow like that, even if I tried hard, I would still not be able to get all the branches. So it's in a good position now so I can finish limbing it. But before I cut it to length, I wanted to show you something because this is on a lot of my trees here. You can see the top died or it was broken off. It looks like it was broken off. Here in the northeast we had a uh, severe ice storm about 25 years ago and that's what it did to a lot of trees is it uh, broke the tops off of them the trees response to that is to generate new leaders which is what these are there's another one there sort of in the snow so what I and I may do this but if I cut this off and count the rings I'm guessing that'll be 25 to 30 years old this um, this branch existed before the ice storm, but when the top was severed, it sort of turned itself up to become a new leader. Sort of a race to be the leader, because there's at least three of them. So what I'll do now is I'll cut this up into either 16-foot logs or 10-foot logs. Those are the two lengths uh, that my customer wants, mostly 10-foot. We leave uh, four to six inches of trim, so... When I say a 16 foot log, it really will be 16, 6, 16, 4, or 10 foot 4, 10 foot 6 inches. And I use my Spencer tape for that.
So actually I mentioned I was going to cut it up. I am, but not here. <clears throat> My plan is to lug them out, uh, which is not too far from here, just to the edge of the field, edge of the woods. Uh, then I'll cut them to length and then I'll come pick them up with my logging trailer. Uh, this is a cookie that I'll save and I will count the rings to see if the age of this branch equals that 25 year time frame that I'm speculating. So uh, I, there are two 16 foot logs so with the trim that's 33 feet I had enough for another 10 foot log at 43 feet 6 inches. So I cut that at 46, I'm sorry, 40, 43 and a half feet. So that's the length. I'll get two 16-foot logs and a 10-foot log. I'm going to finish cutting up the top and we'll haul it out. You may have noticed as we were coming out there's uh, quite a bit of mud and the issue here this year was that we did have an early freeze the ground froze but then we had a lot of rain a lot of warm weather melted all the snow melted the ground then we got a lot of snow and without a lot of cold weather the ground never froze so you drive over the snow and it looks like all is good and then you start spitting up mud when your tires spin or whatever. But there's enough snow where it shouldn't cause much of a problem. I don't have any super muddy places. Most of my roads are in decent shape. So let's go find another one. I didn't have to go too far to find another leaner. This one's a little bit different. Still attached to the root, so there's uh, no obvious sign of rot. That's not what it tipped it over. It's just wind and shallow roots. So it's leaning, but it doesn't seem to be leaning hard against the tree, meaning I think when I cut this, it's going to fall just like any tree would. But I did notice the one next to it, to the left there, right there. Uh, had its top clipped off. Now, when that happened, I don't know. I don't know if that tree's any good, but I'll cut it down. If it's sound wood, then I'll take it.
it did not fall. Wanted to a little bit. Uh, but the way I cut it, I was able to undercut it there so my chainsaw was not in the way when the tree fell and uh, rested on the stump. But it's completely severed. Now I'll let the tractor do the rest of the work. But before I do that, I think I'll take that other tree down, which is right next to it. And then I can uh, haul them both out at the same time. There is a bit of a risk of uh, cutting the second one. That leaning tree that I just cut is mostly hung up on another tree beyond it. But it is hung up a little bit on this, so when I fell this tree, it may allow this one to fall down. I will try not to be under it when that happens. My escape route will be that way. This one is cut off. I heard it uh, and I saw it settle so it's resting on the stump. But now they're both sort of hung up on that uh, spruce which is uh, just beyond these two. So I'll wrap chains around both of them. That stump over there, since the tree now fell off from it, I'll cut that stump so it doesn't cause the same issue as the first one I think did a little bit, hanging up the tree trying to drag it out. It didn't get hung up on the stump, but it's hung up on something else. I'll just drag that one, the topless one, <laughs> I'll drag that one out first, then I'll mess around with the one that's hung up.
have no idea what it was hung up on. It could have been another stump. It could have been a rock. It just could have been a divot in the ground. I'm not sure. But you'll notice the same thing here is on that spruce that we took down. The top was knocked off and there are three new leaders. And again, I'm guessing it's that uh, 1998 ice storm that caused that. The tree has been living fine ever since. The butt of it looks sound, so I'll limit, cut it to the, the tree length that I need, cut it out, bring it out in the field, and then uh, cut it up into logs. So this, the uh, the splintered top, the live tree, uh, there was a little bit of rot, about a two inch diameter in the middle, butt rot, which is common in fir. And I clipped the end of the other one off, the topless tree, and that actually was sound, so I'm guessing it was, top was clipped off recently. The uh, topless one is a bit buried, so I'm going to drag them both out where I can more easily get to the limbs. And then I will do the same with that log. I was able to get three 10-foot logs. I actually need a lot more 10-foot logs than 16-foot. So this uh, is 31 and a half feet long. And we'll see what I can get out of the other one. Snow has its pluses and minuses. One of the pluses is it lays on the snow. Generally you can easily cut and limb without worrying about hitting the ground because it's quite a bit up off the ground. And putting the chains underneath, like in this instance there, it was not difficult just to, to shove my hand underneath to get the chain or the cable around the end of the lawn. The downside is when it's this deep, this wet, and the forest floor has a lot of brush. Uh, it's basically up to my knees. So it's difficult walking, which is why I'm often out of breath. So let's drag these out uh, a bit to the clearing, into the road, and we'll deal with that other log.
So I was able to get uh, three 10 footers out of that one too. So that are two tree lengths, 31 and a half feet long for now. There'll be three 10 footers in a bit. I am gonna drop that and I'm gonna hook that bottom log a bit closer so I can lift it up further off the ground. Uh, then we'll head out. Almost at the end, when I was trying to make the little jog to get on the other side of the first tree I brought out, uh, when I got down to the mud and it spun and without the frozen ground, uh, it was hopeless. Rather than mire myself more, I let go of the, uh, the cable, plenty of cable there. I drove up to where I need to be and I will winch the logs in place. So here's that cookie that I cut off from that uh, limb that became the leader after I suspected uh, the ice storm of about 25 years ago. So what I did is I uh, cut it flush or cut it, cut it uh, with a table saw and then I sanded it so I could easily make out the uh, growth rings which actually came out fairly well. I did use my little um, magnifying headset which made it a bit easier. So what I determined was from the pith, or the first year of growth of the branch, to this past year was 32 years. So the 25 years does fit in there. The other thing I looked at, you can see from here out, the growth rings were much wider. So the growth of this branch or new leader really took off, and that was about 15 years ago. So if that was the case, then there was about a 10-year lag between the top being damaged and this branch really taking off and growing as a new leader. Uh, and then the 15 years since, um, until this past summer or fall when it blew over.